really excited to introduce our next speaker, Bob Blancato. Bob is president of Matt's Blancato and Associates here in Washington and is the national coordinator of over 3,000 member bipartisan elder justice coalition. He's also vice chair on the AARP, he's on the AARP board and uh, the AARP foundation board. Uh, with older Americans experiencing some of the highest rates of social isolation, Bob and his colleagues play a critical role in addressing this issue. I also on a personal note, well, <laughs> on, a, on a personal note, Bob is a tr uh, truly a dear friend of mine and a mentor and uh, played a, a really a critical role in establishing the coalition uh, with me and with our team in 2018, for which I'm forever grateful. So Bob, welcome. Thank you for the presence. Thank you, Andrew, for the nice introduction and also I commend you on your pioneering work in founding the coalition. It was about being policy foresighted and personally compassionate about the issue of isolation and loneliness that did you made the coalition happen. Now it's been declared a public health crisis by the Surgeon General. Also, Julian, thank you for your great work. Our coalition, Elder Justice Coalition, I'm proud to be here. My focus is on two linkages to loneliness that have an especially distinct impact on older adults. Julian mentioned one of them, elder abuse and malnutrition. Elder abuse is a complex but real national scandal. One in ten older adults are victims, and a victim is never the same. Two particular areas of elder abuse connect most directly to loneliness, scams, and in particular romance scams, which the Federal Trade Commission and the Senate Aging Committee said claimed victims with an estimated loss of $139 million in 2020. You consider the average victim of elder abuse is an older woman living alone between 75 and 80. Recent census data shows that more than 46% of women between 75 and 80 in this country live alone. A day in a life, victim at home all day, no connection to the outside world. The phone rings at four o'clock. On the other end of the phone is a scammer. After she says hello, there's trouble. The second major form of elder abuse tied to loneliness is self-neglect, caused by any number of factors, including having been a victim of neglect by someone, then being abandoned. Some studies say it's the second fastest growing form of elder abuse after financial abuse. One consequence of self-neglect and neglect is malnutrition. Today, one in two older adults is either at risk of malnutrition or is malnourished. The CDC recently released data showing there has been a doubling of death by malnutrition just in the years between 2018 and 2022. We are all aware and will become more so with the easing of the pandemic that more older adults become isolated and lonely during the pandemic. We're beginning to hear more reports about elder abuse. There's important legislation pending in both the House and Senate to address elder abuse, the Elder Justice Act Reauthorization and Modernization Act of 2023, led by Senators Wyden and Casey in the Senate and Congressman Neal and Bonamici in the House. It has many important provisions, but let me cite two. It would provide dedicated funding for adult protective services, which in every state is the front line in helping victims and also helping prevent victimization. Second provision is a new grant program authorized at $250 million directed at area agencies on aging and other CBOs, specifically addressing social isolation. And since, and because it's targeted to the aging network, that can include helping with key interventions such as nutrition services to prevent malnutrition. We're working to gain additional and bipartisan support for these bills, and we need your help. Because Thursday is the annual observance of World Elder Abuse Awareness Day. It is critical that we join and connect and connect our advocacy forces to address through responsive legislation, isolation and loneliness and those issues that link directly to it, like elder abuse, malnutrition, mental health and fall prevention. It's vital that we raise our voices on behalf of those who cannot. And we can measure success in the most compelling way possible. If our advocacy and the response of Congress and the administration leads to fewer people being isolated, lonely or abused, then what better outcome could there be? Thank you very much. 